I'm Dr. Jay Peacock, professor of history at Nash Community College, and this is History 132, American History 2. How can he be a dud or a stick in the mud when he's Franklin D. Roosevelt John? To name any period in history after one person is questionable, but there is no question that Franklin Delano Roosevelt dominated American life in the 1930s and 1940s to such an extent that calling the 30s and 40s the age of Roosevelt has some merit. Roosevelt served as President of the United States for over 12 years, and as Doris Kearns Goodwin has put it, these dozen years were no ordinary time. FDR took office on March 4, 1933, in the midst of the worst economic depression in history, and before that crisis was over, he led the nation into the greatest war in history. So Roosevelt's entire time in office from 1933 to 1945 was an exercise in crisis management. Roosevelt made mistakes, especially in domestic policy. Some even argue that his economic policies actually prolonged the Great Depression. But most people, including most historians, still rate Roosevelt very highly for the way in which he guided the country through two of the gravest crises in its history. Roosevelt's domestic program came to be referred to as the New Deal. Did the New Deal restore full employment and end the Depression? No. But New Deal programs helped ease the suffering and put in place some government programs that made a depression of that magnitude less likely in the future. Among the most important permanent New Deal agencies were the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and of course, Social Security. When he signed the Social Security Act of 1935 into law, Roosevelt himself called it the cornerstone and supreme achievement of the New Deal. And historian David Kennedy says, above all, the New Deal gave to countless Americans who had never had much of it a sense of security, and with it a sense of having a stake in their country. And it did it all without shredding the American Constitution or sundering the American people. At a time when despair and alienation were prostrating other peoples under the heel of dictatorship, that was no small accomplishment. Roosevelt also helped bring a greater sense of security to the world by guiding the country through most of World War II. Before most Americans realized it or were willing to admit it, FDR saw that democracy was in dire peril if the United States did not do all that it could to defeat the forces of totalitarianism that were on the rise in the 1930s. He first worked to support countries that were already confronting Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan. But when, on December 7, 1941, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor brought the U.S. directly into the war, FDR became, as he put it, Dr. Win the War. He died shortly before the end came, but his policies, in cooperation with America's allies, especially Great Britain and the Soviet Union, ensured that two of the most dangerous and racist regimes in history would not take over the world. FDR's successor, Harry S. Truman, continued, with varying degrees of success, most of Roosevelt's policies until he left office in 1953. So there is merit in calling the 20 years from 1933 to 1953 the age of Roosevelt.